There's a really great quote from the book To Kill a Mockingbird, where Scout, the female protagonist, claims, I never love to read, one does not love breathing. Yeah, it's pretty corny, but it stuck with me all these years later because I too love to read. I enjoy learning, and there's arguably something to be learned from every book. Whatever your reasons for reading are, you will come out a different person at the end of the book than you were going in. And I don't mean that your values and principles as a human being will be changed, though sometimes that could happen. I mean simply that at the very least, you will have learned a new story that you did not know before. So books change us, like music, television, and movies change us. But in the world where we are bombarded with media, in every aspect of our lives, books play a very different role. A book is something you have to make a personal commitment to. It is time-consuming and something you become an active participant of. As more and more young people are opting away from books and towards video games, movies, and television, I began to wonder why there have been a handful of contemporary novels that have become monumentally popular among our youth culture. Of course, I'm talking about Harry Potter, Twilight, and The Hunger Games. But more than wonder why they are so popular, I was curious about the representation of women in these books. Because yes, finally kids are reading again, and in astronomical numbers, the fan bases for these books are enormous, among both children and adults, with dozens of websites still tremendously actively devoted to both the book and film adaptations years after their initial release. So where the impact of books on their audience is undeniable, I wondered what our readers were taking away from these books, specifically regarding the representation of women. Now this is no criticism of these books as a whole, as my only objective is to bring attention to the way girls and women are being depicted in these books, focusing specifically on the female lead's overall representation. I'll start with Harry Potter, where we have a tale about a boy wizard whose fate is entangled with that of an evil, powerful wizard whom he fights with the help of his friends, Ron and Hermione. The series extends through seven books full of profound themes of death, grief, desire, and rebellion, while also highlighting the importance of the love of family and friends. The author, J.K. Rowling, presents her young characters with apparently unsurmountable obstacles, but despite suffering and loss, they are able to defeat evil together. To me, Hermione Granger was the most important element in the success story. Now hold on, I'm not just saying that because she's the only girl and obviously must be really awesome. You'll see what I mean when I discuss Twilight, because it's definitely not the case. But it is Hermione that time and time again saves the day through her relentless love of knowledge. Not just a brainiac, Hermione consistently stands up for what she believes in, is the only one to make active efforts to create equality, is usually the first to stand up against any injustice, and unabashedly defends her friends with her wit. Where it would have been easy to write her as a passive genius in the background, Rowling wrote much of her action around Hermione's planning ahead, her wit, hard work, and refusal to give up. And though Rowling admittedly writes Ron as Hermione's love interest, Hermione is a full, developed character, completely separate from Ron, and is not afraid to disagree with him when he is unreasonable. So yes, Harry Potter is a book about a boy fighting evil, but he is certainly not doing it alone. His friends are with him every step of the way, with Ron helping in any way he can, and Hermione helping in absolutely every way she can. And then we have Twilight. Alright, so we have Bella Swan as our lead. Yay, a girl, finally, right? Not so much. Through the four books, Bella is always presented in relation to handsome vampire Edward or beefy werewolf Jacob. I wouldn't even rant about the whole love triangle plot device, but will, without any reservation, say that where Hermione, even as a young kid, is a dynamic, multidimensional character with agency, Bella is, to quote a couple of brilliant ladies, a vessel who offers the author, readers, and viewers the opportunity to live out fantasies about attractive, possessive men. When I first read that, it got me thinking, and indeed, Bella is a vessel, an empty vessel that when you take Edward and Jacob away, I would not want to be. 
She's purposely written as a character with no agency so that the female reader could insert herself in her shoes and magically be the object of desire of these two hotties. Her entire presence revolves around the two male characters who are much more interesting than she is as her character is not at all developed. And even as simply a vessel, Bella is not someone I want to live her fantasies through. Maybe I do fantasize about attractive men, but that never ever involves them sneaking into my room at night to watch me sleep and me being completely okay with it. This representation of weak, needy women is a huge step back in the struggle to do away with these restrictive stereotypes that belittle the capacity and potential of women as leads, especially in a young audience's eyes. And then we have the Hunger Games trilogy. The three novels written by Suzanne Collins are set in a future dystopian North America in a country called Panem. The story is about a young girl named Katniss Everdeen who becomes an unwilling participant in her oppressive government's Hunger Games, a competition in which 24 tributes are forced to fight to the death as a reminder to the population of the government's control. Katniss proves to be a dynamic, strong female lead who is truly put through horrendous circumstances, and though a fighter, she at times becomes overwhelmed to the point of wanting to give up, until she is reminded that what she is fighting for is much, much bigger than herself. There is admittedly a love triangle in Collins' trilogy as well, and though it makes me cringe at times as a plot device, Katniss is still an active and separate character from her male protagonists. The boys aren't saving her or rescuing her from harm because she's weak and defenseless. She's just as strong if not stronger than the male leads and even saves their lives a number of times. There's also no notion that Katniss is lucky to be the object of affection of these desirable males, as she has a lot to offer and doesn't depend on their love to sustain herself as a character. The love interest in the novels is overshadowed by the much bigger conflict in the book. Katniss experiences unimaginable emotional, physical, and psychological harm and loses the ability to feel safe or trust another person. Where Collins might have been tempted to maintain Katniss as a stoic, unemotional, and unaffected female character as she was in the beginning, she chose against it and instead offers us a realistic character with both strengths and weaknesses. Her ability to feel and to be affected by what happens around her and to her is what makes Katniss a successful and truly relatable female lead. The success of the books is notable, and the success of their movie adaptations even more so. The movie adaptation of The Hunger Games grows $155 million in its opening weekend, up there with giants like Star Wars, The Avengers recently, and hey, Harry Potter, proving that movies with a female lead can be extremely successful. The Twilight film adaptations were also on the highest grossing list, and I think a big reason for this is that once something is in the mainstream, it is popular and therefore acceptable. It warrants permission for our impressionable youth to enjoy it. When I read Twilight, I often found myself appalled, but grudged on and read all four of them, thinking, everyone loves this, there must be something I'm missing here. I think that for the most part, we know better, but we doubt ourselves in comparison to the mainstream's ideologies, not realizing that we make up those ideologies as well. I'm overall glad that these books have young adults reading again. I just hope that the future will hold more heroines like Hermione and Katniss and much, much less of Bella Swan.